What's up guys, it's the Press Panda here, and today we are in Wargame Red Dragon. So, I've noticed a lot of my friends who have bought this game have had a lot of trouble getting used to it. I've brought one of them here with me today, say hi Macaridi. Hi. So, um, he is among the newer players of this game, and um, he's had a lot of trouble just getting used to it all, so I'm here trying to, you know, just give you guys the lay of the land, and uh, let you know what to do. So, we're starting off with just some basic infantry stuff. So what I've got here is a uh, command Humvee. So what this does, you'll, you'll notice the little star next to it. That means it's a command vehicle. These command vehicles can uh, capture these empty sectors, as you can see, around. They're everywhere. So I'm going to drive one of those up, followed by four normal rifle sections. So you can see them here, they are again in, in little Humvees. So, these guys often come with short range anti-tank, and that is their, you know, their biggest selling point, really. They'll fight other infantry, but they've got a uh, pretty good AT. So, we're going to be defending this tiny village, so to speak. Um, so, the easiest way to do this with, with uh, infantry like this is to place them in the buildings obviously but you want to place them in, in specific buildings so for example here we've got this uh, three ro these three rows of buildings here so each one of them is a little defensible sector that they will occupy out here you can see uh, pretty much everything the sight line on this sector here is very big so if you put your short range infantry there, unfortunately they're going to be spotted and killed very quickly before they even get a chance to fire. Now what you want to do is you want to put them in the second sector, for example. You want to hide them between buildings so that uh, the enemy doesn't know they're there until they are within firing distance. What this does is it allows uh, the infantry to be a lot more versatile. So I'm gonna garrison them here. So McCready's got a tank on standby nearby. So once these guys are set, I'll get them to send them I'll get them to send the tank down the road and uh, see what happens. Alright, here we go. Alright McCready, my guys are all set up. If you wanna send your tank just down the main road to that crossing and yeah, let me know what happens from your perspective mainly? What if she's on the way? Juiced. But the ah, here we go. There's something there. So I can see something. McCready, can you see my infantry units at all? Nope, not yet. So he can't see them. They're still out of range, but his tank has to close in very close in order to see them. And at this oh, there he goes. He's firing at my command unit, but he still hasn't spotted my infantry. So I'm gonna move my command unit slightly. Now you'll notice this will give up the sector. There we go, he spotted... Ah, okay, did you see my infantry at all then? After he fired, yeah. Yes, so, um, you guys will notice, we spotted him about here. He didn't see us until it was already way too late. That's the point of this. It is great to holding uh, choke points like this crossing, for example. So, that is... Um, that's pretty much it for light infantry. Now, I'm going to make get McCready to send something heavy. So what you'll usually come up against is T-80s, T-64s, even T-55s. So, McCready, if you have any of those, send one of those down the exact same path and see what happens. Alright, they're just coming in now. Alright, so once again, he should not be able to see us until he's right on that corner. We should get eyes on him, or at least identify that there's an enemy vehicle. However, uh, as you can see, the infantry, the air anti-tank weapons that these infantry guys have is not the strongest. There is definitely stronger out there, smalls, kalku stuffs, anything. These guys are great for holding tiny choke points with their light, uh, light anti-tank. That would be a T-55 first. Alright. So the T-55 is probably the, I'd say, the mainstay of the Russian forces at that point. Um, T-70s and T-72s were were rarer, but a lot heavier than C-55s. Should be able to get eyes on. Ah, there we go. 
Alright, there she is. So, we can hear the T-55 once again. And McCready still can't see our dudes. Nope. So McCready, just let me know when you can actually catch a glimpse of my infantry. Alright, here they are. My boys are preparing they to are. fire. And they're firing. So, the tank could not at all spot my infantry until they were within firing range. Alright, so they've killed the tank, but as you can see, he took a lot more damage. Got T-64 coming in. So these guys are amazing at close range. They are great for holding choke points because the enemy just will not spot them if you hide them well enough. Downside, like I said before, they can't see anything out there. We've got a very, oh well, this is pretty much a heavy tank at this point. This is a T-64, so these guys are already some heavy duty equipment. So my guys are getting ready to fire, and the tank spotted them. So already these shells are just bouncing off the tank like, like they're rubber bullets. Haha, uh -huh. okay. Alright, if you want to send your last remaining tank in there. Yep, coming in. So already we are down to 6 shots out of 24, but these guys held. Alright, let's see if the T-80 can do any better. It looks like these things are just bouncing off like rubber pellets. No Alright, and they're down to their last round. Will they make it down? Yep, and they're basically dead. Alright guys, so that pretty much concludes uh, your, your basic riflemen. Your, your, these are just your basic riflemen, they've got their M16s, they've got their M60s. Uh, and they'll usually carry some, oh, <laughs> and they'll usually carry some light anti-tank. Now, as I showed you, the light anti-tank is great for holding areas, and uh, they'll defend against a lot of tanks. They'll defend against other things, but these guys can't very, uh, they can't really flourish in prolonged engagements. They're great for ambushing tanks and taking them out. Um, yeah. So next, we're going to move on to the long range AT. Alright guys, here we are. Um, so, right now we're going to be covering everything about the long range AT as I like to call them. These are usually guys, in this case with an Erex, that come with uh, wire guided launchers, tow missiles, lock on launchers, whatever you want to call them. But they have uh, an insane range, often of more than one kilometer, so these guys profit from the long sight lines. So as I said before, these three sectors are perfect for infantry. Uh, the sector I've currently got them placed has sight lines that span basically this entire area, so anything coming down these paths will get shot at before it even gets a chance to uh, get in the range. So this is basically the exact opposite of what you want to do with your uh, normal rifleman. Your normal rifleman, you want to keep hidden. Like I said before, you want to keep hidden with relatively short engagement distances. The shorter, the better. These guys, you want out in the open. The longer the engagement distance, the better. Because uh, these guys have immense line of sight. They will shoot anything before it gets close. So, once again, McCready is going to send some tanks down that road, and we'll see how they do. Alright, inbound. Alright, so, they've spotted the tanks, and... I've got no line of sight on you. Yeah, apparently these guys actually have quite... So this is actually very short range um, when it comes to long range AT. But here we go, one salvo has basically wiped out all, the, all these tanks. His tanks never even got into range, so these guys never saw what hit them. Alright, so that's what I find amazing about these guys. They will hit anything before said thing gets a chance to shoot him. 
Alright, now, uh, Rikini, if you want to send some heavier tanks down this way. Four T-55s coming. Alright, so here come his tanks. You let me know when you can actually see my units, or when your guys are targeting them. Yep. Here we go again. Still not seeing. Still can't see him. No. Here we go. Alright, there we go. In this case, uh, so these guys basically work by the motto, offense is the best defense. They will shoot the shit out of, uh, pardon my language, they will destroy anything that comes into their range, and they have quite a range. Um, these guys are relatively short with a range of about one kilometer, but you can get ones that fire up to two kilometers, you can get ones that fire even further. Um, the downside is they use a lot of ammunition. Uh, McCready, have you got any infantry standing by? I can get them dismounted and send them towards you. Alright, do that. So, um, I think we've proven these guys have a lot of firepower. They have very heavy anti-tank, and they can fire it at long ranges. Now, their downside usually is they operate in smaller teams. Uh, these guys I have here have some more, a little more infantry. However, they are easily overwhelmed uh, in close quarters. Because as you can see, all they have is their little rifles. They have nothing else except rifles, and therefore will be destroyed by most infantry units. So right now they're getting shot. All they have is 20 rifles firing back at BTRs and uh, other infantry. Alright guys, there you go. Um, that was pretty much everything you need to know about the long range AT. The basics of these guys are deploy them outside of whatever you want to defend with long sight lines because they will hit anything that gets in their range and that range is quite immense. Um, make sure they're protected by other infantry, for example the normal riflemen because uh, these guys don't have the defense or the firepower to really stand up to uh, infantry. Um, other than that, that is pretty much all you need to know. Hey guys, we're back and this time we are focusing on the Special Forces unit. So in this case I have the American Delta Force unit. There are others like the SAS, the Spetsnaz, all sorts of units. The beauty about these is they're uh, obviously elite, so these guys will do a lot more damage. Uh, you can also see at the bottom there, they have uh, little skulls next to their icon. That's because they are the best of the best. So they usually carry some form of uh, medium HT, in this case the Carl Gustav M2. Uh, as well as normal weapons and uh, machine guns usually. The beauty about these guys is that they can be deployed very quickly which I will now demonstrate. So these guys uh, in my case come with Chinooks. They can also be deployed with Black Hawks or whatever else really comes to mind. So we'll just wait for these guys to get in here. So they can be deployed very quickly throughout the battlefield. Uh, and that's good because, uh, well, you can secure any area really quickly with these elite troops. For example, if you put them in uh, any area, they will just basically annihilate almost everything in that area. They are very expensive, however, costing usually twice, if not, in some cases, three times as much as regular infantry. So what I'm going to show you is how to deploy these guys uh, and what to do with them, really and what they can do in, uh, in turn. So I've got two units of Delta Force being flown in here. I'm just going to unload these. So when it comes to positioning your units inside villages, um, you want your special forces, uh, you want to treat them similar to your basic riflemen really. Uh, you want them in close quarters, uh, basically hidden from the enemy until it's too late. So I'm going to send these Chinooks off somewhere. So you can see that they have a lot of units. They are actually uh, 
I think their squads are at least twice the size of regular rifleman units. With uh, about 10 men each. Alright, so I've set these guys up where we set the other guys up. Alright, so these guys will make very short work of T-34s because they have their Carl Gustav which can take a lot of, uh, you know, it can di dish out a lot of damage. They're coming. So already these guys have spotted them and they can actually identify what they are. Um, that's probably because they are, in fact, you know, elite. They also have a longer range, as you can see here. They've already started firing, whereas the other unit didn't actually engage till before. So if you actually spotted the SF so far, or if they'd just been shelling them. So he hasn't actually been able to shoot. Uh, the tan not the tanks, but he hasn't actually been able to shoot the Delta Force unit. So these T-34s didn't even get close. They never even saw what hit them. Alright, if you want to send uh, slightly heavier tanks. Alright, so already we have, uh, you know, stronger tanks inbound. Now these guys are going to start engaging any second now. Oh, there we go. Now they have been spotted, however. That being said, they're still going to make pretty short work of these T-55. So even when they've been spotted, the Special Forces units are definitely a force to be reckoned with. Alright, um, do you want to send some infantry at those guys? Spot those armoured vehicles flanking. Yes, ah, here we go. Here are they. Here they are. So, we've got some infantry inbound, and there's a lot of them. They, okay, well, they've disappeared now, because my dudes are blind, apparently. But, uh... So, as you can see, there's a lot of infantry incoming. But, hopefully, because these guys are a lot better trained, they should... Should... Uh, take care of them pretty quickly. Yeah, so they're already mowing them down like nothing else. These guys haven't even taken a casualty and they've basically cut the enemy force in half. Alright, well guys, as you can see, Delta Force freaking rule. Um, they've taken two casualties and have wiped out 30 or 40 enemy soldiers. Um, so yeah, that is pretty much all you need to know about special forces. Deploy them deep beyond enemy territory if you have to. Hunker down and destroy everything. Alright guys, we're back, and this time we are covering what I like to call anti-infantry units. Um, so in this case I've got pioneers with, as you can see, napalm throwers, so they've got flamethrowers. Um, so these guys have a range of essentially, you know, my arm. So what you want to do is keep them, again, you want to keep them hidden, but not exposed on the flanks. Um, if I put them here where I put the uh, light anti-tank and rifleman units they would be uh, they would get shot down from this hill because they don't they don't have they just don't have the range to, to fight back so what you want to do is keep them in in very tight urban environments uh, where you will face infantry at very close quarters you can even deploy them in forests just anywhere where they can basically walk up on infantry or have infantry walk up on them All right. Creating, if you want to send your infantry down into that village and just try to take it. Got it. Inbound. Sweet. Alright. My flamethrower infantry, as soon as his units come through this line of buildings, they 
will be spotted, but at the same time, they will be close enough to, you know, literally melt them with their flamethrowers. Alright, so we can already see your unit. So as you can see here, the line indicates where I'm aiming. Now the blue uh, filled in part is their range. They have a range of uh, pretty much that first row of houses. Alright, my kitty, let me know if and when you spot my guys. Alright. So as you can see, we can see his units, but they can't see us because we're hidden behind this building. So his units are going to move in, even even if they occupy these buildings, uh, my units will torch them, because they'll be in really close quarters. Now this unit has a huge floor that we'll get to in a bit. First off, uh, yeah, we're going to watch the fireworks really. There we go, and my guards have engaged. He's only just seen my units, but unfortunately for his units, it's already way too late. They're about to be just absolutely destroyed. There we go. So that was two losses versus 80 of their losses. Now, uh, as I said before, this unit has one fatal weakness. So these guys are solely anti-infantry and close quarters, so ambushes inside uh, suburban areas, like here for example. Just uh, chuck them in there, or if you're holding um, a village that's right next to a, a forest, put these guys at the edge of the village next to the forest. If anything comes out of there, um, they're going to get toasted. So we've got four <laughs> immensely uh, what's the word? intimidating tanks heading our way. I say intimidating, they're driving like they're drunk, but like, I mean, yeah. So these guys are going, oh god, what do we do? And, yeah. Unfortunately, that's the end. So they're going to try and cook the tanks, but it's it's really not going to do much. Tanks just don't care. We're already down from 40 to 13, and the tanks haven't even been scratched. So I can't even tell my guys to run at this point, they're just... Oh no, one of them's trying to get away. <laughs> Mobile barbecue on its way. Nah, he's gonna fight to the death. There we go. Alright guys, just to recap. Infantry, well, anti-infantry units, they're great to defend. Well, obviously against infantry units, they're great to defend uh, villages next to forests. They're great to be sent into forests to clear out infantry. Um, what you never want to do is send these guys yeah, across open grounds or into open combat because they are absolutely useless. These guys should stay in urban areas, forest areas, anything that will get basically guarantee an engagement range of less than 300 meters. Alright guys, that's pretty much all you need to know about the anti-infantry units. Hey guys, we are back, and this time we are looking at the anti-air unit. So, in this case, I have a javelin. So, these these sections, I should say, come with two units each, as you can see down here. So, in terms of placement, where do you want to place these? You don't want them on the outside. Definitely not, because they can't defend themselves at all. These guys don't need to shoot outwards, they need to shoot up which means it doesn't really matter where exactly you place them. What you want to do is put them here, for example, or even at the back. You want them in a central location, but hidden enough so that they won't be engaged as a first point of call, really. All right, Kenny, if you want to send in some helicopters, we'll test what these guys can do. All right, they're coming. So, most of these guys are heat seekers, stuff like stingers, igglers, that sort of thing. They'll lock on for a short amount of time, fire, and usually miss, to my experience. Um, 
There's also the Sacklos variants, which I don't really know what Sacklos stands for, but I'll probably look it up at some point. Um, so yeah, as you can see here, these guys have actually missed. Um, most helicopters will flare to try and avoid this stuff, but at the same time, as you can see here, they just they will get murdered by AA most of the time. There we go, that's two MI-24s right there. Um, so like I said, you want to keep them in a central area. Uh, they can also target aircraft, but their aircraft range is significantly smaller to that of mobile anti-air, which we will cover in a different episode. So, um, I've demonstrated that these guys can take on helicopters really easily. Now, other than that, these guys just they will die to anything. So McCready's got some simple North Korean riflemen standing by. If you want to send those in just to attack them. Yeah, they're coming. So these these Koreans, uh, well this rifleman unit, it's honestly the worst of the worst. They are conscripts at best. They are as you see with the little chevrons here, they are barely trained, they have horrible the equipment, they the just it's it's a mass thing, right? They uh, attack on mass, and that's how they destroy you. Now, he's sending 40 at us. We're not going to be able to defend it. We couldn't even defend ourselves against one section because, as you can see here, they've got RPGs, they've got assault rifles, they've got LMG. What these guys have, what these guys have, um, is two rifles and an anti-air launcher. So here we've got a total of eight rifles. That's all we have. Eight rifles against 40. So these guys won't even stand a chance. If you picture a, a large dome, they just cover an entire area and keep it safe from anti-air. So, to recap, you do not want these guys in the front lines. You want them protected and hidden in a central location of whatever it is you're trying to protect. They will attack aircraft, but you should use uh, mobile anti-air instead. Alright guys, that about covers everything for the AA infantry. Alright guys, we are back, and this time we are looking at the recon units. Now, uh, you may be wondering whether this is part of the infantry, but I just figured um, it would fit in so well. Obviously, we'll cover the helicopters in a second. So out here, I've got some recce infantry. These are just two dudes with a, a sniper rifle. So, the beautiful thing about the recon units is, as an MCGS, they can reconnoiter things at great distances. I'm going to send my guys through this forest here and see what we can spot on the other side. These guys have massive view distances. So if we get to the edge of this forest, they'll be able to spot everything in this area. Just absolutely everything. This is a great spot uh, if I was defending the town we were in before, just to see what would come around that corner. Ah, there we go. We've already got some tanks there. What else we got? We've got another tank back there, so we've got some T-80s. We've already spotted six tanks just at the edge of this forest alone. Sneaking in. I mean, what the recon unit does is, is very self-explanatory. Um, in this case, for example, I could call in airstrikes, I could call in uh, artillery, I could do all sorts of things. Uh, Alright, what else are we going to do? I'm going to bring in a recon helicopter. So I'm going to get my guys out of there. And we'll wait for the recon helicopter to come in. Here. And here is our Kiowa. Kiowa, Kiowa, I don't know how to pronounce Kiowa. this. Kiowa. Kiowa, that'll do. So, I'm going to put my guy in the exact same position. Now, McCready will most likely see this guy as he approaches. Or at least when he's in position. But as you can already see, We've got things popping up, and my guy isn't even near that position. So we've got things all the way up there. Okay, we're about to see pretty much everything in this area. There we go. So you've seen him, but he's also seen one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight of your units. Or at least your entire set of units. So the the uh, recon choppers, 
they are a lot more, uh, not fragile, but they're a lot more easily spotted and killed than uh, infantry recon units. But at the same time, it's a risk versus reward thing where you can spot more in turn. Let's say I was to go back to that uh, hill at Juliet. Alright, McQueen, just let me know if at any time you lose visual with the helicopter. Lost it. Alright, so McCready lost the helicopter about here. Now, I can still see his T-64 because they're out in the open. If I fly up there, I can also see his T-80s. I can also see his Mi-26. Can you still see my recon chopper? Yeah, because I've got infantry uh -huh. and, uh, see? I didn't even know he had those there. Now, if I hadn't put my stuff there, I wouldn't have seen all these guys. There is a ton of infantry and armoured vehicles waiting to attack. So that's the good thing about helicopters, they're versatile, they are mobile, they can spot things from long distances, yeah. although the downside is they are also spotted from long distances. Alright guys, that's about all you need to know for recon units. Just to recap, you want to hide them in areas with large lines of sight, that's, that is infantry. With your helicopters, you want to put them in a central location where they can easily escape to friendly territory should they need to. Now the bonuses of uh, recon is obviously knowing where your enemy is, but that's self-explanatory. When you know where your enemy is, you can bomb him to hell with uh, jets, artillery, anything you can think of. Get creative, really. Anyway guys, that's it for recon.